Hi, I'm Tom and Homi from Dell EMC. In this video, we'll talk about one of the projects under the Container Storage Module program by Dell Technologies. Container Storage Module, which is formerly known as Project Karavi, is the code name of set of projects that aims to ease and accelerate enterprise capabilities for storage management in Kubernetes and OpenShift on top of the CSI specification. Today, we will dive into the authorization project. This project has been designed to offer multi-tenancy and role-based access control between Kubernetes clusters and the storage array. With the help of CSM authorization, customers can segregate array usage between multiple tenants, control storage consumption with the help of quota, ensure that tenant cannot access storage from other tenants, create, update, or revoke storage access at any given point in time, audit storage access by the tenants, and hide the access management credentials from the CSI driver and replace it with a JSON web token. The key concept behind CSM authorization is to minimize the storage administration exposure from the Kubernetes storage consumers. We are segregating the responsibilities between the Kubernetes administrator and the storage administrator by adding a component that acts as a proxy between the Kubernetes clusters and the management interface of the backend storage array. The storage admin will deploy CSM authorization and operate the component on several aspects like maintaining a list of tenants and JSON web tokens to authenticate the users used by the CSI driver and queries, maintaining the list of arrays and credentials to access them, and last but not least, it will maintain the relationships and quotas between those two. The steps of a normal workflow are the storage admin creates the different elements, quotas, storage, systems, token, etc. A cluster requests to create or delete a volume or a snap. The proxy intercepts the query and validates it. If it authorized, we have a quota for it. And if it's in an invalid request, we return a payload with the details of the reject error to the user. In case of success, the proxy forwards the request to the PowerFlex system, and in case of an error, we forward the error to the user. In case success, we return success, and we update the quota accordingly. As you can see in the diagram, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the Kubernetes clusters and the authorization token. We can generate multiple tokens for a single tenant to give access to multiple clusters managed by the same tenant. Then, we can assign roles which allows the tenant to consume storage from one or more pools. This module is currently supported with Dell EMC PowerFlex systems. Additional storage arrays will be added in the future. Now, let's see a demo of how it all works together. As you can see, I have an OpenShift cluster running version 4.6, which consists of three master and three worker nodes. The PowerFlex CSI driver is installed on a cluster and it can consume storage from my PowerFlex system. By navigating to the PowerFlex CY and clicking on the SDC tab, we can see the OpenShift CoreOS worker nodes, which have been registered during the CSI installation. Under the storage pools, we can see that we have two storage pools. We will use them to demonstrate the authorization feature. The CSM authorization is published in several packages, either as Kubernetes application that you can load on an existing cluster or as an all-in-one package to be installed on a separate host. The standalone package contains everything necessary to run CSM authorization, K3S Kubernetes distribution to run the application, the application itself as a set of pod services, etc., Karavi CTL to manage the different aspects of the application, 
and even the patch to the CSI drivers to connect to the application. For the purpose of this demo, we will use the all-in-one RPM package. This can be downloaded from the GitHub page. Once downloaded, you can install it with the RPM command. Now that the installation is done, we can check that the application is running using the CaraviCTL cluster info command. As you can see, all the components are running and we are ready to configure the module. The first step is adding an array. The array is the entry point for other objects like access or tenants to be hooked to. To add a storage array, we run the following command. CraviCTL storage create, we specify the endpoint and the system ID, the type and then the username. In case you put a wrong password, CSM will prompt you to re-enter the correct password again. Now we can check the configured systems using CaraviCTL storage list. Here we can see the details of the registered Pathflex system. The next step is configuring the storage access role. The first parameter is the role name. For example, an R&D role for my development team. Next, we specify the array type and our specific array ID. Next, we specify the storage pool and the allocated quota for this role. We can check the roles using the CaraviCTL role list. Next, we need to create a tenant object. This can be our Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. We run it using the CaraviCTL tenant create and specify the name. Now, we can link our tenant to the role we've just created using the CaraviCTL role binding create by specifying the tenant ID and the role. Now, we need to install the new secret and sidecar on our cluster. We navigate to our OpenShift cluster and list the controller pods. As you can see, five out of five pods are running. This includes the CSI driver as well as the additional sidecar containers. Now, we generate a token from our CSM machine and creating a new secret with the token in the namespace of the CSI driver. We use the CaraviCTL generate token for that and then use the kubectl apply command. Next, we check that the installer is ready and then we go for the installation. As you can see, we now have an additional container in the controller's pod. This is the authorization proxy which intercepts the queries and validates it against the CSM machine. Now, let's try to create a new pod with a persistent volume of 1 gig from storage pool 1 storage class. As you can see, the volume has been created and the pod is up and running as it doesn't breach the limit. Now, let's try to create another stateful set of three pods and three persistent volume which exceeds the allocated quota and see what happens. This time, you can see that the volumes haven't been created. By navigating to the CSM authorization log, we can see that this tenant reached his limit, and as a result, he cannot consume more storage from that PowerFlex storage system. In this case, he needs to remove existing persistent volumes or contact the storage admin and ask for more storage capacity. In conclusion, CSM authorization gives full control to the storage admin to create secured and multi-tenant access control from different clusters. In the future, we will add support for additional storage arrays like Paramax, Parstore, Parscale, and Unity, as well as intelligent volume placement between the arrays. If you want to know more, feel free to check the GitHub project at github.com 
slash del slash Karavi or reach out directly from the Dell Containers community. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.